and we'll have a user ID. First name, last name. Now, in reality, we probably want want more stuff, but I'm um, I'm gonna leave. I'm going to be a little sloppy here and leave some of these things as optional and not put in all the fields just in the interest of time. All right. And then we need a vote table. And that vote is going to have a user ID a number, a poll ID, which is a number, and a sequence, which is also a number. <laughs> These two parts are going to be the primary key. That will enforce a constraint that a person can only vote once in a poll, because a combination of user ID and poll ID is going to be unique. So person one can vote in polls two, three, four, and five, but person one can't vote in poll two twice. All right. Let's go and implement our relationships. I'll show the user and vote table. Here, actually, our foreign key has to point to the primary key of this table, so this is actually going to be a two-part foreign key. And I'm hoping access will allow me to do that. And it's not. This is a limitation of access because I should be able to connect these two fields to the primary key of this field. It doesn't recognize that. So, what am I going to do? The problem is, the problem is, is this table doesn't. So what I'm going to do is do this. You should not have to do this. What I did there should have been correct. But I'm going to go up here and I'm going to edit this. Go in design view. And I'm going to put a possible answer ID. That's going to be an auto number. And I'm going to change that to be the primary key. And then on my vote table,
I'm going to omit the index just because of the limitations that we have here. There we go, we're back in business. So, we've unfortunately, due to the limitations of access, not implemented all the constraints that we'd like to, but it is what it is. All right, so let's go in here and let's put in some users. ID 1, picks answer 5 in that poll. Android. Okay. User ID 2, Huffman, who knows what he uses. So we'll say 6, or we'll say 7. I think that's other. Yeah. User ID 3, Huber. Um, user ID 4. Oops. User ID 5. Goes in and has 6, we'll say. Okay. So, we now have for the, the one poll, we have a list of answers. Now we have to count them up. How do we count up answers? How can we count up answers? Could you do it in a query? You could do it in a query. How do you do it in a query? What, what's, pardon me? Account. Account. Account will do that. A sum? Okay, you would do a group by. You guys are you guys are, are, are remembering more than I, I expected. Uh, all right. Let me put up on the board the tables and then we'll talk about the statement that we need. So we have a vote table that contains a vote ID, a user ID, and a possible answer ID. We 
you then have a possible answer table that contains a poll ID, a sequence, a, a text, and an answer. Poll ID, sequence, answer, text, and I think we have a possible answer ID. Okay, if I were to say this, select star from vote possible answer where Possible answer ID equals possible answer. That possible answer ID. That's a step in the right direction, but it's also, I hope, clearly wrong to you. What is wrong about this? I'm selecting everything. So what am I going to see? Everything. Okay. And and don't I want to see everything? No. No. I want to see something that looks like this. I want to see Android two votes, iOS two votes, other one vote. So I don't want to see what this would give. And again, you're right to say it would show everything, all right? But specifically, it would show us individual votes instead of tallying up and counting the number of votes, all right? So if we put this in there, we'd be moving in the right direction. We'd be getting all the votes, but we would be seeing all the votes um, individually. And we don't want that. We don't want to see the votes individually. We want to summarize it and say that... This answer had this many votes, this answer had this many votes, and so on. Plus, we don't care about some of the things, right? We don't want to show the user ID and the username. and Well, we're not showing the username, but we wouldn't want to show the user ID and all that. Also on this where clause would be and poll ID equals question mark. So we'd need that in there, too, all right, to make sure we limited it to just the one poll that we have. So let's move in the right direction. If I did this, select answer text vote ID from possible answer vote where vote possible answer or, yeah where vote dot possible answer ID equals possible answer possible answer ID And poll ID equals question mark would be a little closer, right? Because we wouldn't be showing all the fields, but we would still show the, the text for the possible answer, the ID of one of the votes, the ID of the next vote. And we did, this would still show the individual votes. I heard someone say we wanted to use a group by. I don't know who said that. Okay, group by is something we want to use because we don't want to see individual votes. We want to see a tally. That is, we want to see an aggregate function. 
Aggregate means like total or collection. So I don't want to see each individual vote for Android. I want to see how many votes. All right. So what would I group by here? What do I want that, that to those totals broken down by? Your possible answer ID. Okay. Actually, we could sort of do that, but we want to group by the answer text. That that will be that will work as well. And we don't want to see the vote ID. What do we want to see? I think I heard David say this. We want to see the count of the vote ID. So we don't want to see how we don't want to see the individual vote IDs. We just want to count out how many vote IDs, that is, how many votes were made for this particular possible answer. Now keep in mind, when you use aggregate functions, you're breaking down and instead of getting every row, we're going to get one row per whatever we have listed in the group by. So we're going to get one row per answer text, which is what we want, right? Android, number of answers, iOS, number of answers, other number of answers. All right? So that's exactly what we want. We don't want to see every row. We want to see one row per answer text. So that's what the group by is. Now, the stuff on the select statement either has to be on the group by statement or an aggregate function. So, in this case, I want to see the answer text. Well, that's in the group by. So there's one per answer text, so we want to see that answer text for this row. We then want to see the count, and count is an aggregate function, so therefore, that's acceptable. It doesn't have to be on the group by clause because that's an aggregate function. So that's going to give us a total count of how many rows from there. All right? Let's go in and make it work. So I'm going to go back into my SQL data source. Actually, I'm going to delete this data source because we just use that as a stepping stone. I'm going to delete this grid view. There we go. Strictly speaking, I didn't have to do that. It just it just seemed to make sense to me just to, to make a clear, a clear start, clean start. So I'm going to go and pick my SQL data source. I'm going to call this guy SQL data source vote. <coughs> and I'm going to configure it to say what data, what connection string, yep, that one. Hope I can remember what I've said. Select answer text count vote ID from possible answer comma vote where possible answer dot possible answer ID equals vote dot possible answer ID and poll ID equals question mark group by Answer text. All right. I'm going to run this. Where is it getting the value from? From the query string. What's the call on the query string? ID. Let's test the query. And we'll put in one. And sure enough, that shows me Android 
iOS and other. So pretty sure that's the exact values I entered, so we're in good shape. So I click finish. I now go and add the grid view for this. And I choose a data source. Notice that this is showing me answer text EXPR 101 because that's an aggregate function. If we don't like that, we could go and edit the column and say, let me change this, the header of this to answer. Maybe change this to number of votes. And now if we go and run this, and we have Android, iOS, or other, number of votes, and so on. Now, here's something neat that we haven't done yet with grid views, but we can. We can enable sorting if we want. All right? We can enable sorting. We can en enable paging and selection. Paging is where we could show, like, if there was a whole mess of votes, if there were, like, 100 options for a poll. I don't know. It seems like kind of a goofy poll. But if there were, we could show 10 at a time. Enable sorting is a nice feature, though, because then we could choose to sort either in alphabetical order or by number of votes. So I could go in and say, you know, view it either way that I wanted to. So we can sort it according to number of votes, ascending or descending or we can sort it ascending or descending alphabetical order. It's kind of a nice feature. Now, any questions up to this point? Review the aggregate functions, because the aggregate functions come in handy when you don't want to see every individual row, but you want to summarize it. Remember, you know, we, we talk about the whole purpose of databases is to take raw data, just this pile of raw data, and transform it into something useful. Well, how do we do that? Well, we do it by combining things with other, other things. That's doing joins, right? We combine it by filtering. Well, that's a wire clause to only show me one poll, for example. And we also uh, can, can, can glean data from, uh, uh, or glean information from a raw pile of data by uh, summarizing. In other words, we don't care about every single um, vote. We just want to see the total number of votes. And that's where we use aggregate functions and group by. You know, think of it. Um, the president of LC here, um, if they want to get an idea of, like, where the students come from, a list that showed every single student wouldn't be terribly useful to them. All right? But if they had summaries that said, X number of students came from Illyria, Y number came from Lorraine, and so on, that might be useful for them. All right? Even more useful if you combine that maybe with some other enrollment figures, like maybe from the previous year or whatever. You can see where it's increasing, decreasing, and that takes that raw pile of, uh, of data rather and gleans some information. Now, here's one, and again, One of the things that I try to show with SQL, like in all my classes, is how SQL really has just a basic few handful of elements. I mean, there's not like a bunch of things you can do in a SQL statement. Yet, you can do queries to get like almost anything that you want to from the database. All right. What if the question was, and in fact, I did say this, what if I wanted to see by percentage? All right. How could I do by percentage. All right. Isn't there an aggregate function that like times it by 0.10 or something like that? Well, but that wouldn't really give me the percentage. I, I could multiply it by some factor. But for example, here, two people picked Android. 
So it should show four, two out of five people picked Android. So it should show 40%. So if you were doing this by hand, how would you do it? Well, you take the number of votes per for, for the one answer. You divide it by the total number of votes, and that would be your percentage. Well, how are we going to write that in a SQL statement? I'm going to go, and I'm going to copy the SQL statement into Notepad so that we have, so we can see it. Thank you. So, let's see, we want to show both the percentage and the count. So this shows the count. What would the percentage be? Well, it would be the count of votes for this answer divided by the count of all of them. How do I get that? Count of answer text. No. Because there's three answers, but there's five votes. This is where I use what's called a subquery. What I really want here is I want a count of the number of total votes for this poll. So I would say count vote ID divided by select count star from votes Yeah, you're right. 